Good morning. I'm Pastor Jared, and we are here at Ridge United Methodist, uh, excited and ready to worship with you as we gather uh, from different places and different spaces. Uh, even you who are joining us from uh, from Eastern Standard Time, where it's noon for you, maybe even uh, eating lunch as you're worshiping with us. Uh, we are so glad to be together. Oh, even from Texas, Jeff. Wow, we're so glad to have you. Uh, it's good to see you. I think you win the award for the furthest away. Although I think you're in 85. We had several from Florida who joined it. Um, aren't, is it aren't the Bizarcos still down there? Oh, I didn't flip it either. Let me flip the screen. Thank you. Let's see. We're still getting dialed in here, making sure everything's good. Well, we are going to be... There we go. Look at that. Wow, you did it online. I know. Job, Jared. I'm learning. Oh, I'm so proud. <laughs> well, we are going to be uh, standing and, and, and worshiping here. You can feel free to stand or to sit at home. Uh, but the praise band is is here leading us. We've got Alan uh, there, and Jen Lichtel there, and Jen Olenicek there. Uh, Beth, Beth Ann's also with us. You see, see there, and and Shannon's back at the at the screens. So so we are here uh, physically, and we all are together in spirit and in truth, knowing that where two or more are gathered in the name of Jesus, there He is also. So whether you're at home or you are physically here with us, uh, let's worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's praise God's name. Uh, don't, don't we need that? I mean, it's just good for our souls to worship together. So praise man, will you lead us as we? Join in singing 10,000 Raisins.
much for leading us, Praise Band. And thank you again for joining us on our live stream here uh, via Facebook Live. Uh, I'm going to invite you, if you're still standing at home, to go ahead and have a seat. Uh, I've got a few announcements that I want to, uh, to give you. And as I'm talking, I'm wondering, uh, what are some of the reasons that you have for worshiping God? Uh, we just sang the first song, 10,000 Reasons for My Heart to Find. And the second song uh, about declaring God's goodness. Now, where have you seen the mercy of God, the goodness of God, reasons to worship our Lord this morning? Um, I'll just say that one of the glimpses of God's grace and beauty that I've seen this week is that we uh, got some new bird seed for our bird feeder and to see a bunch of different kinds of birds uh, all gathering and congregating uh, and, and eating just in our yard has just been a daily grace for me as mercy is new every morning. So, so share them in the comments as we, uh, as we continue this morning. But as you do, I want to uh, share a few things with you. Um, first of all, that, that we miss you. Um, it's great to be here worshiping, but it is not the same. Uh, and so I, I just want you to know that, that we all miss seeing you on Sundays and throughout the week. And we hope that you're well, you are in our thoughts, and you're in our prayers. And, and, um, and we miss seeing you. We look forward to the time when we will be together again. Uh, until then, we're trying to keep things as normal as possible. And so in the comments section, or if you visit ridgeumc.org, you can see uh, a bulletin for today's service. It's the 11 o'clock service. You can click on it, and there are lyrics to the words as well as an order of worship that you can follow along. Things are abnormal outside in the world, and so we are keeping things uh, normal here so that you might have an anchor point for your soul as you begin a new day and as you begin a new week. Uh, may you uh, be, be, be blessed in this hour of worship we have together. Uh, but in a minute, Beth Ann's going to share a little bit more about our children's ministries and youth ministries. We hope that you were able to join her uh, at 10 a.m. every Sunday for a children's lesson and uh, that you are receiving the activity books that she's sending, mailing out each week. Uh, we hope that you're enjoying that. Um, also, I want you to know that every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central Time, 8 p.m. Eastern, I am broadcasting a, a Facebook Live Bible study with Pastor Quincy from Westminster Presbyterian Church. Uh, we are studying the resurrection accounts in the gospel, and this Wednesday, again, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, we will be looking at the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. So we hope you can join us, and if you want to read ahead, feel free to do so as we continue um, our, our weekly Bible study together. Finally, I want to update you on what we will be doing for uh, the next uh, couple Sundays, in particular Easter Sunday. Now, we are going to continue to adhere to Bishop Trimble's um, recommendation, as well as the recommendations by the healthcare professionals at the CDC and the World Health Organization. So we will continue to, uh, to meet um, not in person, but online uh, through the next two Sundays. And we'll go from there. As we all know, details continue to emerge and change on a regular basis. But we want to, number one, offer you the opportunity to still buy Easter flowers. Hopefully you received Karen's email this week. It's $10 for, uh, for Easter flowers, and Beth Ann and I will be uh, picking them up from a local store, and we will be delivering them to your front porch. Uh, we don't want you to get out. We don't want to have your health be at risk, and so we won't visit, but we'll wave, maybe talk through the screen door and place it on your porch. Uh, but for $10, you can order some Easter flowers because we still want you to have that beauty and that new life in your homes. Uh, finally, we as a staff have been dreaming up how we can still celebrate the Easter uh, Sunday, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So here is what we're going to be trying to do. Again, things could change, but as of right now, we're going to offer one service at 10 a.m. We are one church family. We are one church body. So we're all going to gather at 10 a.m. to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
Now, you can certainly follow on your Facebook Live account, but one of the things that what we're hoping to do is to have a drive-in Easter service so that you and yours can get in your vehicles and park in the church parking lot or even down the street, depending on how many people are able to come. And we are going to broadcast an Easter service with a brass quintet, with live music, with praise band, with piano, with song as we celebrate, with physical distancing, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So mark your calendars, share the invitation on Facebook, because we want people to experience the hope and joy and the promises that we have on account of Jesus Christ. Uh, a lot of stuff is in the works. Worshiping God doesn't stop. Ministry doesn't stop. Uh, but we're trying to be innovative in how we do that. So I'm going to turn it over real quick to Beth Ann as she shares some of the innovative ways ministry is continuing to happen with our children and youth. All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, just so you know, we are still doing Sunday school and children's messages here at Ridge at the 10 o'clock hour. We have a group on our Facebook page called Ridge Kids. And Shannon and I go live at 10 o'clock every Sunday, and we share a children's message that pertains to the, the sermon that Pastor Jared shares. And then we go right into our Sunday school lesson that follows along. Um, right now, we're following along with Lent and Easter. So this morning, we talked about Jesus in the synagogue. Um, it was, it's a great opportunity for you and your children to join Sunday school together. Usually, the children are, are there and you are not. So this is your way to kind of see what we do um, on Sunday mornings. So you're welcome to join us at 10 o'clock. Um, we had a great time this morning. There was a hammer involved and a shoe. And if you missed it, that's okay. You can go to our group page and you can click on the live video. Or Karen is going to upload it to our YouTube channel and you can watch it from there. Um, but it was a lot of fun and there was a lot of kids that, that were there this morning participating and commenting. And it was, it was great. Even Pastor Jared stopped by. It was kind of fun. So it was a good time. Um, also, our youth group is still meeting via Zoom meetings um, at 5 to 6. I send a link to my middle schoolers, and we meet, and we do some um, Bible study. Uh, today, we're doing three different verses, and the kids are going to have an opportunity to do some fun stuff with their verse. Um, and then we'll share about them. And a lot of it is the kids just like to see each other and talk to each other and, and be in contact uh, with each other, even though they have to be apart. So it's been, it's been great for them to, to catch up with each other and, and to actually be able to see each other and, and talk to them. And then at 6 o'clock is when I meet with the high schoolers. Um, they zoom in and we didn't really get much done last week. There was a lot of laughing and, and somehow we got stuck on pie. I, I don't know. I lost control, but that's okay. We had a great time together. Uh, the kids were happy to see each other. We had people who haven't been able to be with us were able to join us. Um, so that was awesome as well. Um, there's still, you know, Bible lessons that we're going to do and scriptures to learn and, and we're going to grow our faith the best way that we can. And this right now is, is working for us. So we, I invite you to join us um, at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings uh, for our Sunday school and our children's message. And then if you have a high schooler that is not normally in our youth group and would like to join in or a middle schooler, just send me an email or comment here and, and we'll get you queued in so that you can join our meetings tonight. And that's all I got. I'm going to turn it back over to Jerry. Well, thanks, Beth Ann. And, and again, thank you all for joining in and for, and for participating uh, this morning. Uh, hey, we're going to worship God now through the giving of our tithes and offerings. I'm going to ask Alan to play some music and give us a little space to do that. Uh, as a reminder, you can text to give. Uh, just text the word GIVE to 219 400 Four seven seven zero. The number is right up behind me. Uh, you can text that way. You can continue to mail your checks in, or if you want to visit our website, ridgeumc.org, there is a secured giving link and also a video that Karen has made explaining how you can either make a one-time donation or to set up reoccurring gifts. Uh, we thank you for the ways that you continue to support the ministries of this church uh, financially and for all of the ways that you continue to give, um, even in these strange and different times. So I'm going to give us some space to do that. Alan, do you mind playing for us as we give to God our tithes and our offerings?
Let's pray. Oh God, we thank you for the ways that you continue to abide with us and among us. We thank you for the ways that you, your mercies are new every morning and that your goodness is made known to us in loud ways as also in little and quiet ways. Oh God, as we worship you this morning through the giving of our tithes and offerings, through the singing of songs, the reading of scripture and the proclamation of your word, oh God, we ask that you would be glorified as we turn our eyes upon Jesus. Oh God, help us to look full into his wonderful face, so that the things of earth might grow strangely dim in light of his glory and grace. Oh God, be with us as we continue to be your hands and feet and offer the world the hope and the good news of Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. So as you know, we have set up a phone tree here at Ridge, and it's a way for us to all stay connected together. Diane Camadello has done a great job organizing our volunteers. We have lots of people that are making lots of phone calls and checking in, and it's been so helpful because we are hearing about prayers and concerns and things from people that we have kind of lost touch with. So this has been just a great opportunity for us to be able to reconnect with those um, that we love and that are a part of our rich family. So Diane and all of your volunteers, thank you so much. I know that Pastor Jared and I have received many phone calls this week of people checking on us, making sure that we are staying safe and we are staying healthy and we are caring for, for our families and we are so appreciative of all of the love and care that we have received this week. So thank you all very much uh, for checking on us. Um, as we try to do our best in this crazy time that we have. But now that we have this phone tree, we have heard some, um, some prayers um, and some concerns that we need to share this morning. Um, Do Ray is going to be having a surgery um, on the tumor that she has, um, the cancer that she was diagnosed with. She is still battling. Um, I do know that Bob is in declining health. Um, the last I heard that he was going to be entering into hospice, we have not heard any word yet on him, but we will keep you up to date on, on Bob and Doe Ray. Also, Sue Wood, um, her daughter Karen is usually here in the nursery helping uh, Mrs. Uh, Susan Bryce take care for the little ones. Her mom is, has been ailing from certain um, different things for the last three months. Um, and when Lois called to check on her, we found out that, that she wasn't doing so well. So if you could pray, please pray for Sue Wood. Uh, she would really appreciate that. Cheryl Walters is doing remarkably well in her radiation. She only has seven treatments left. Um, and she did make note that her, the people who are, the radiologist is telling her her positive attitude has really helped her healing. And she's grateful for all of you who have reached out to her and pray for her and chat with her and check on her. So yay for Cheryl as she continues with only seven treatments left. Um, I also have good news. Our Chelich family that uh, we lifted up last week, they did receive the results from COVID and it is negative. They are not suffering from COVID-19. It's just a bad strain of the flu. So thank goodness for that, um, that they are healing and, and getting better, but continue to pray for them. Gail Bizarco hurt her back and she's in a lot of pain. So if we could lift up Gail in our prayers um, so she can, her back will be healed. And my husband Scott was in the ER on Wednesday. He has a blood clot that formed at the back of his knee and goes all the way down to the top of his foot. Um, so he has started on blood thinners to hopefully break up that blood clot so he will start feeling better. So if you could raise Scott up in your prayers, we would really appreciate that as well. And we are now prepared to go to song. <laughs>
Let me give you an opportunity to be still, to calm your hearts and your minds, clear your heads of any thoughts, just focus in on God. Heavenly Father, your beauty and splendor are everywhere we look. We started the week with snow and ice and end with sun and wind and tree buds. In every season of the earth, you are pre present in all that we see, smell, hear, and taste. Thank you for all that you've created. We are so blessed to be your children and that your love is obvious around every corner of life. Father, we are not called to sit in pews and celebrate your glory just between us as a rich family. No, we're called out of the building, into the streets, the towns, the community, into the world. During this crazy time, it makes it hard for us not even to just meet here in the building, but to bring you out into the space for those searching for more. Yet here we are, making it work. You provide innovative, creative ways for us to connect, you force us to think outside of the box, to engage with one another, from caterpillars in our windows, to drive-by drop-offs, whatever the need, you have shown us a new way to get it done. God, we're not gonna lie, it's downright hard. Fuses are short, tempers flare, hurtful words are said, and even toilet paper is hoarded. Too often we are fearful that our own will not have enough, or someone we love may go without. Many times we rely on ourselves for resources and not on you. The prayer Jesus taught us tells us that you will provide our daily bread. God, help us to remember this. Show us how to be the church by sharing what we have without fear of running out. Encourage us to seek out resources that can help others during this crisis. And above all, help us to stay close to you, lean on you, and pray. Admit to all this craziness, there are people still hurting from illnesses and sorrows that existed long before COVID-19. Be with them, Lord. Let them know that even in this pandemic, you have not forgotten them, and you are with them during this time of suffering. This morning, we raise up Doe and Bob Ray, Sue and Cheryl and Scott, the Chellich family, and Gail. God be with them. And as we look out into our world, we pray for those who have to leave their homes to care for the ill. Protect our doctors and nurses, our first responders, and all hospital workers. We pray for the cleaning crews, the maintenance workers, the facility managers that have to continue to go to work to keep everything sanitary. Help us to be good people to the cashiers that need to work so that we can get what we need when all they want to do is be with their families and be at home. We pray for the stockers and the truck drivers that make sure the shelves are full. God, I ask you to give extra strength to our teachers as they teach online. We know how much they care about their students, not just their academic success, but the total well-being of these children. We ask you to reassure their hearts and let them know that you're watching over their students during this time when they cannot. God, there are so many people working overtime to keep our country and world running. Lord, we pray for them all. Father, we also recognize that today would have been our healing Sunday, a time for restoring and soothing our weaknesses, whether they be physical, emotional, or spiritual. Though we cannot place oils on foreheads and hands today, we can feel your loving arms around us. We can trust in your magnificent healing power to pour over us. And in this season of uneasiness and uncertainty, we can rely on you. Father, we bring all of our prayers to you, ones we have spoken and ones we hold tight in our hearts. We will continue to rely on you during this time and all time, for you are the only resource we need to fuel our souls. God, we thank you for all that you do and continue to do for us. We will do our best to be the church in new creative ways. We raise our voices in praise to you as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. scripture verse this morning. Um, it's been so good to hear uh, different voices reading for us, and I know that you're here both on the live stream, but also in spirit as, as we uh, proclaim the scriptures and as we worship God together. Um, you know, it's been, it's been a wild week, hasn't it? Uh, when Beth Ann had mentioned that last week started with snow and, and then it ended with torrential downpours, uh, life blooming, our grass is green, uh, buds are growing on trees. I mean, life is just kind of like that, isn't it? I had a friend uh, down in, she's in the Indianapolis area, and she said, uh, posted a picture rather, I think it was yesterday, of, uh, of hail just falling from the skies, and she said, what's next, the plague of locusts? I mean, life is just absolutely bizarre right now. And so, uh, so I hope that, that our time together is one that feeds your soul and, and that blesses your spirit, uh, because we need to be mindful in these days of what voices we're listening to and setting aside carving out time to be listening to God. We're going to talk more about that, especially as we look at today's scripture passage. But first, let's begin with a word of prayer. Will you bow with me? O God of the world, O God who holds the whole world in your hands, uh, we gather here today grateful for the ways that you have been with us and the ways you continue to be with us at such a time as this. You have blessed us, O God. And you have blessed us to be your blessing in the world. Change us to become more and more like that little child who gave his fishes and loaves to Jesus, 
so that both he and all those around him could have more than enough. O God, shine your light upon us now so that we might not look to our own interests, but more and more to the interests of others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I want to thank you again for joining us this morning. A lot has happened both this week and uh, in, in the week since we started our Lenten journey five weeks ago. I mean, who would have thought that we would end up giving up so much for Lent? Uh, there's this meme that's been floating around my social media feeds that, that, that this kind of laments that we hadn't planned on giving so uh, giving up so much for for Lent this year. Uh, it, it seems, or it makes some of the old practices that I've done in the past seem kind of trite. Uh, I, I think it's going to make me really reevaluate how I, I practice the discipline uh, of Lent and fasting in the years to come. Uh, traditionally, Lent is a time when you might take on uh, some spiritual disciplines or practices, uh, or it's a season. Season, like Jesus when he was in the wilderness of fasting or giving up something. Uh, but giving up chocolate or, or soda just seems so insignificant uh, when compared to the things that, that we've had to give up or, or at least have chosen to give up for the well-being and safety of others to use the expression, flatten the curve. Uh, I, I hadn't planned on giving up not seeing or hearing your stories or, or, or talking with you or handshakes or hugs. I, I hadn't planned on that. I hadn't planned on the physical distancing. I hadn't planned on all the disruptions this has caused not just to my work life, to our lives together, but also the ways it's disturbed my soul. It's making me wonder, how am I going to be different when we get to the other side of this? How is the world going to be changed? How will you and I together be different as people and as a church? This time is affecting us and changing us. How will we be different? That's the question I've been wrestling with this week, and it's the question I continue to wrestle with this morning, because at its heart, that is the question of Lent. Once the season is over, how will you and I be transformed? Now, normally, we think about this just within the six-week confines or bookends of Ash Wednesday and Easter Sunday, of time in Lent when we intentionally try to participate in disciplines or self-evaluation by pruning away our lives so that the life of Christ might grow more and more in us. It's a season of inherent transformation, and now the season in ways that we could not have ever imagined nor ever desired has forced itself upon us that is asking us, or, or, or inviting us rather, to ask the question of how do we hope to be transformed? On the one end, the question is, is passive. There are things that are happening to us that is affecting our own well-being, our, our retirement accounts, our, our physical health, the love and concern we have for our neighbors. It's affecting not only our American economy, but the global economy in ways that we can't even yet imagine. Imagine, certainly there will be a transformation. But the question of Lent, the question of Easter, and the question of Jesus is how will you and I be or choose to be transformed during this season? What you are doing during this time will determine who you will be after. What you are doing now will shape who you are tomorrow. What you are doing during this season, not just of Lent, but continuing as the effects of this global pandemic unfold, will shape who you are after it's done and how you will handle it in the meantime. So I want to be asking you, once this season is over, how will you be transformed? 
We have been talking uh, last week and, and, and as we shifted gears in the sermon series about being. And, and so it's an appropriate question in the midst of all of this. Uh, last week, though, we began with the words of Jesus and the refrain that occurs throughout both Testaments. In fact, it's one of the most popular uh, uh, refrains that continues throughout all of Scripture uh, to not be afraid. It's a great reminder because this is the God who calms raging seas. This is the God. God whose spirit hovers over the chaotic waters of creation. It's the same God who is with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace and Daniel in the lion's den. We need not be afraid, the scriptures tell us, in spite of whatever comes our way and whatever circumstances we find ourselves in, because God is with us. God is with you. God is with the doctors. God is with the hospital staff. God is with the grocery store clerks. God is with the sick and the dying. God is with those whose jobs are being lost or threatening to have their salaries reduced. God is with us. So do not be afraid. We need not be afraid because... And in the midst of this, in the midst of that promise, it's not just passive, but it's an active cultivation. We are called to, to cultivate greater trust. We are called to exercise the muscles of trust so that at such time when we are called upon or forced to use them, we will be ready. Sometimes our trust muscle can atrophy because life is going well enough that it hasn't forced us to intentionally choose to trust. When the waters are smooth, you don't have to worry about whether or not your boat can withstand a storm. But you always have to do regular maintenance to ensure that your home, your boat, or your body is as healthy and ready as it can be. Same too with our souls. And so last week we were challenged to, to not just be passive during this Lenten season and not just passive while we are practicing physical distancing, but to be hungry and active. We were challenged, do you remember? To be like, let me get this straight, there we go, to be like caterpillars. We tell the story of the very hungry caterpillar who's hungry to grow in our relationships with God and active in our care for one another. This was our challenge, not just to put a cute caterpillar on our windows or in our front doorways, but to use them as reminders that we are called to be intentional and hungry to grow in our relationship with God and to also be active in our care and concern for others. So let me hang this picture up on a nice surprise I have for you today. I want to make your day as good as mine. Boom. You are welcome. Look at this. The six foot whiteboard, three feet tall. If I, do you remember the, the show, the Tim the Tool Man Taylor? Oh, 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 oh. You know, when he has a new tool, that's it. <laughs> This is what I do. I lost it. That's right. <laughs> Too much time in the house. Uh, but, but this is our reminder to, to be hungry, to grow in our relationship with God, and to be active in our concern and our, and our, and our care for others. In fact, I had planned on, uh, for the last week or two, to, talking us and challenging us to, to be the church. That's the original title. If you're following along in the bulletins, to be the church, to, to be active in our care for one another. But, but my goodness, you all are doing that so well. And of course, I encourage you to spur it on. But, but, but you all have been reaching out, calling one another, sending cards, sending emails. You all have been loving each other well in a time when we all and each of us so desperately needs it. I'm proud of you. And I'm thankful. It's been so good to hear your voices. Even when I missed your call and, and you have left me voicemails, I appreciate it. I enjoy listening to them. And some of the conversations I've had with you, you all have shared with me about how meaningful it is to receive a call and also how meaningful it is to call somebody else. It's kind of like this pass it on. You receive a call, you receive a blessing, it kind of prompts you or invites you to share it or to pass it on to someone else. You know, I was talking to several people, and then they shared with me how needed this is as well. Like, we are all going through some really hard times. And it's different for each of us, and it's unique to all of us. But this has not been easy. This has been a disruption on levels that, that we are still trying to process and understand. 
And yet through it all, we're with each other. You are here for one another. Apparently that old song I grew up singing in church is true. The church is not a building. The church is not a steeple. The church is not a resting place. The church is the people. <laughs> and y'all are proving that to be true. I know God hasn't abandoned us because God is using you to remind me of that truth. So keep being the church. Keep being hungry to grow closer to God and keep being active in your concern and care, your love for one another as you look out, as Terry read for us, our scripture, the interests of others. Uh, you know, you're living that out so beautifully, looking out not only for you and your own, but also for those around you. I celebrate that. Um, you are inspiring me and you are challenging me to do better at that myself. Um, you know, people say that, that, that fear is contagious, and that's true. But so is love. We're told in scriptures that perfect love casts out fear. So keep loving people. Because in your calls, in your cards, in your messages, you are casting out fear. Reminding people through your words, through your letters, through your messages, that God is with them. You're embodying the Bible. You know, I, I, I'm not concerned about how you and I as a church will be once this is passed and once we're able to meet again regularly. Uh, because you all are practicing and cultivating uh, the scriptures in your lives. We will be a better church on the other side of this because of what you are doing today. I'm proud to be your pastor. I'm thankful for you. We are being transformed, and I have a feeling we're being transformed like caterpillars turning into butterflies. But right now, we are in the in-between. We're not there yet. We're not on the other side of this pandemic. We're not even to, uh, to Easter Sunday. To use our Christian imaginations, we are not in Easter morning. Instead, we are stuck in the day between the days. We are stuck in what the church calls Holy Saturday. Holy Saturday is the less celebrated day that occurs between Good Friday when Jesus is crucified on the cross and Easter Sunday when we shout Hosanna and sing up from the grave he arose. Holy Saturday is the day between the days that's less celebrated and it's the time when we remember that Jesus' body was laid and rested in the tomb on the Sabbath. There was no visitation. Hmm. I know how hard that is for so many of us, being unable to visit our loved ones in the hospital or nursing home right now. It was a day of mourning before there was Easter morning. And how true that is for so many of us as well. Mourning that which we've lost, the friendships, the contact, the pay getting a chance to gather together. There's a place for Holy Saturday. If we use our scriptural imaginations, it's not just a day in the past. It's a state of our souls and perhaps even a state of our country and world. There's something about Holy Saturday that resonates with our grief and with our pain and with our struggle. Today, we are continuing to talk about the caterpillar, but today we are focusing on the cocoon or the chrysalis. I learned, thanks to my daughter who studied butterflies, that, that, a, that a moth uses a cocoon, but a butterfly uses a chrysalis. They're functionally the same thing, uh, as one transforms into another. Uh, but this week, I'm gonna be inviting you to either take down your caterpillars or alongside them to decorate or to print out an image of a cocoon and paste it on your windows or on your front doors. As reminders of the state that we're in, uh, of this Holy Saturday experience, and also as calls to action. Now, the cocoon is a visual depiction using our Christian imaginations of Holy Saturday and its invitation to be 
still. To be still. Now there's a scripture passage in the book of Psalms when God invites us to be still and to know that I am God. Invites us to be still and to know that God is God. There's something about the stillness that God chooses to reside there. Again, the God who, who makes his bed in lion's dens and who walks in fiery furnaces is the same God who, as the story is told in 1 Kings chapter 19, speaks not out of loud voices, but in still small ones. God told God's prophet Elijah to go and stand on a mountain to wait until God would pass by. So Elijah went and waited, but as he was waiting, there was a great wind, almost like a tornado, that tore the mountains apart and shattered rocks. The scriptures say, though, that God was not in the wind. After the wind had passed by, an earthquake shook the ground and the mountain around Elijah, but there also God was not in the earthquake. The wind had passed by, an earthquake, and then there was a great fire, but God was not in the fire either. No, it was only after those three had gone through that the prophet Elijah heard a, quote, gentle whisper. It was the voice of God whispering to Elijah. It's hard to hear the whispers when every other voice is tuned, turned so loud. Friends, I'm wondering what voices you're listening to this past week. I'm wondering if you constantly have your TV or your radio or your social media feeds at your fingertips or on your TV. I'm wondering what voices you're listening to and what ways they are affecting your souls. See, this invitation to be still can be a sort of litmus test or barometer to how we might gauge the voices that we are hearing throughout the week, even in conversation with one another. There's a question that I want you to be asking is, is how is this voice affecting my soul? Does what I'm listening to or watching prompt within me or stir up within me a greater love for God and a greater desire or a love for my neighbor? Or is it a voice that is stirring up more anxiety, more fear, more concern, perhaps even anger and hate? Uh, what is your soul feeling in response to the voices you're hearing? If you find that more often than not, the voices are creating more of a disturbance in your soul, I'm going to be inviting you to intentionally be still and turning those voices down or off so that you might have a chance to hear the whispers of God. Now, last week, we talked about how this is not just a passive experience, but an active one. And so as we seek to be hungry, as we seek to grow in our relationship with God, you were challenged to read five verses of Scripture a day. Now, you can dream big, but we're going to start small by reading five verses. And I want that to still be true as we go into this week. There's something about stilling ourselves down by turning off other voices so that we can turn off or to tune up the voice of God speaking to us through the Holy Scripture. It's a means through which God has chosen to speak and grant us God's grace. So be still and read five verses of Scripture a day. Be intentional. We will be different on the other side of this. What we do today will shape how we will be then. I want you to take a break to be still. And in that stillness, to be asking God, some good and tough questions. Now, I have a friend, a colleague from seminary, who expressed the other day that she is sure this season is going to break her. The only question is, will this season break her down or will it break her open? Now, that's a question worth talking to God about. 
The season will break her. It's just a question of whether or not it'll break her down or break her open. She will be different on the other side of this, but what she does today will impact how she will be then. Will she be broken down or will she be broken open? A question to ask God in your devotional. It's a time to be evaluating who we are and what's really important to us. I've been asking this question and thinking about how it's going to be affecting us as a church. We're realizing, I think, that our building is important, that it is important to fellowship and to gather. But I hope that we're also realizing we're so much more than a building, that the church really is the people. And this is prompting us and spurring us to good practices that I hope will continue as we care for each other and our neighbors. But it's also a season that is inviting to ask, us ask a very difficult question. One that we just soon avoid and one that we don't like to think about nor talk about. But I am concerned it is a question that is lurking behind all of our fears and that is in the back recesses of our minds, if not the forefront. The question of, am I prepared to die? And that's a hard question. And that can be a scary question. And I understand. I understand. I think about it too. Not just for my own self, but for my family, my immediate, my wife and my kids, but my parents, my siblings, my mother-in-law, father-in-law, my sister-in-law who just had a baby. I, I, I think about that question. Immediately following the verses of what Terry read for us, it's an early, if not one of the earliest hymns of the church. Whether it was song or spoken, we don't really know, but it goes on to talk about Jesus and the ways that he humbled himself and emptied himself to be one of us, to serve us, to love us, and yes, to be obedient to death, even death on a cross, so that he might defeat death, and that we might experience the joy of eternal life. But it still is a scary question. And it's one that Jesus asked in the garden. So friends, if you find yourself with these questions, it's okay. And know that we're here to walk with you in them and through them. Some point, whether it's because of this virus or just some other reason at the end of our lives, we find ourselves, we will find ourselves dying. That's a hard truth that we like to avoid or pretend isn't real. What we do today, the exercise of trust and faith that we build today, will be important to sustain us in our ends. So dear ones, we walk alongside you. We continue in this place of cocooning, a dying, a letting go, a place in which transformation can occur. Now, we will be talking more about transformation next Sunday, but let me just express to you that there's a difference between a, a cocoon and a cage. You see, there, there's a bad cocooning of this turning inward, of hoarding, of ignoring the pleas of the CDC, of the World Health Organization, ignoring the pleas from doctors and nurses and the immunocompromised. When you make this pandemic only about yourself, that's not just foolish, it's prideful. That's turning inward, and that's sin. When we erect walls to keep others out and, and to keep ours in, when we hoard, when we look only to our own interests, when we mistake social distancing for physical distancing, that's not a cocoon, that's a cage. That's what C.S. Lewis calls hell. And so I want to be careful that as we cocoon in our stillness, that we aren't so self-consumed, but rather we use this as an incubator to help us lean out and lean into, into others, 
to, to care not only for our own interests, but also those of others. A cocoon is not a cage, dear ones. A cocoon is an incubator for transformation. And so as we conclude this morning, as I know we're going long here, uh, you, you thought you'd get a short message, didn't you? Because it's live stream. No, I'm not going to gift you with that yet. <laughs> because we hear enough voices. I want us to hear God's. And here's God's voice. Do not be afraid. Be still. And know that I am God. Thanks be to God. Let us sing together. has been poured into, and I hope that you go forth from this place and continue about your days filled with the knowledge and the goodness of the God who is with you, who loves you, and who invites you this day especially to be still and to enjoy the goodness and mercy of God. Dear ones, we'll see you next Sunday. And until then, be still. <laughs> Take my heart.